Hello there, viewers. I'm the Knight of Arcane, and we're back with another round of Ben 10 Alien Fusion. Last time was a lot of fun, and it's currently my most popular video on my channel, so doing another round of this felt like a good idea. We got four Alien Fusions done for this, so let's look at the results, shall we? First up, we have a fusion of Frankenstrike, aka Ben Victor, and Humongousaur. I want to try and have various bodies in my videos as much as I can, so we have one of the biggest aliens fused with another alien that is also pretty beefy. The idea came to me while I was at work, thinking on what I should do for my second round of these, and believed this to be a cool idea. The image of the giant Tesla coils on their huge body was partially the reason that sold me to do this. A few smaller Tesla coils were also added on the back and decided to make the end of their tail also have one. Sort of alluding to when Humongousaur grows bigger and gets a spiked mace on the end of it. The arms and hands gave me a bit of trouble. I'll admit I need more practice with hands especially, and wasn't sure how I wanted his right arm to look, before I just copied the sketch layer of it and flipped it along with adjusting his position. And then I had to figure out how the right hand looked look also. His body patches are divided by both stitches and scars, a mix between the original and Omniverse designs, with the former mainly having the scars and the latter the stitches, except for the scar on the chest that I also added. The forearms are also a mix of the original design and Omniverse designs. Love the original's hands more. Feels more like a steampunk Victorian gothic design a Frankenstein monster would have. For his shoulders, it's actually a mix of the multiple armor plates Humongousaur has and the Omniverse Frankenstrike shoulders, though the bolts are longer like the ones on the original's design. More of these bolts were added for flavor and where they were in like some of the original designs, and kept the mutton chops for a little fun with the design. I kept them in different shades of greens since it made the most sense to have like the sickly green skin tones Frankenstein monsters have. Especially since his body shape is mainly Humongousaur, so it needed a bit more Frankenstrike, I thought. Plus, their color palette is really good, so I wanted to use it. Also added lightning coming off his Tesla coils. It made the lightning purple to reference Victor's purple lightning to contrast with the greens I used with him. Though I redo them first using a crack brush, but felt it didn't look too much like lightning, so redid it with a normal pen. Put him in a nice scene bones of giant creatures and lightning off in the distance and think the overall piece came out really well. Anyways, let's take a look at our Humongousaur Frankenstrike fusion I call Frankensaur. <laughs> Now, our next fusion was actually a suggestion from a user, one of the first comments on the last fusion video to be exact. Kadan Oposki989, I hope I said that right, made the suggestion for a water hazard and feedback fusion. When it comes to water hazard, I don't really care for the design that had an ultimate alien, but their omniverse redesign is probably one of the best redesigns they did for the series. Probably even the best. So use the Omniverse design for most as reference. And Feedback is just an overall good alien design, but one thing tricky came up right away. I wanted to keep Feedback's electrical wire antennae, but also wanted Water Hazard's hood. I quickly was able to figure out how to do both by adding more antennas and making some go around behind his head before looping up the plug in his chest and then have four flying around in the air like Feedback's normal antennas. Taking some inspiration from the design of Perturabo from Warhammer 40k. With his eyes, I kept the dual slits from Omniverse Water Hazard, but positioned them in the center like Feedback's singular eye, with the majority of the head taking more inspiration from Water Hazard also. I'm very proud of how the eye looks. The head is probably my favorite part of the whole design. The upper body and forelimbs took a lot of inspiration from Water Hazard, but made the fingers be the spark plugs from Feedback's hands, along with adding a few more plugs on the forearms and shoulders. 
Along with some more wires where the little crab-like legs are, I decided on using red, black, white, and gold for their colors. Using the white from when young Ben used feedback instead of the green since I felt the green wouldn't work that well as a main color outside of the Omnitrix and eyes. And it was a really good choice with the colors. I really, really love how the colors came together. All four working together great to make a cohesive design. This fusion was really great and fun. Thank you, Kadan Apofsky 989 probably didn't say that right for the suggestion. Hope you're seeing this and enjoy it. So let's look at our finished water hazard feedback fusion dubbed High Voltage. Our third fusion is also from the comment section. We got a lot of suggestions from Nicoli Moon 6165 and there's some more from them that I'd like to try out in the future, but I wanted to try the XLR8 and Clockwork Fusion they gave, that they named Stopwatch. I kept XLR8's overall head shape, since it's just a good shape, but gave it a smaller point on top after the bolted ring. The idea partially being like how stopwatches have that button you push to start and stop it. Wanting to allude to that, it's kind of more like a button you push on a pen, but I think it's neat and helps us keep the head shape I wanted. While looking at references, one image I saw was someone pointing out there's a keyhole on Clockwork's back, so I decided to add it to the front of the head to help put some different details on it. I tried to have his eyes and mouth be like Clockwork's with the extra thickness that Accelerate has, though it kind of looks more like Accelerate's in all honesty, just smaller. I tried to mix the bulk of Clockwork's body with the sleekness of XLR8, so he had a bigger chest area, keeping the porthole thing and some marks while making the part between the chest and lower torso small and tube-like, similar to the upper arms and legs of Clockwork, which I also did here with Stopwatch's upper arms and knee area. I wanted to try to keep Accelerate's leg shapes, but I wanted to add some bulk to them also. The forearms and feet I also kept bulky, with the hands being like the pointed claws of Accelerate, and adding the wheels on the back of the feet, and making them a bit more like actual wheels instead of the balls. I also put a bunch of wind-up keys and clocks on them. The keys mainly being on the shoulders and the end of the tail, with the one on the back added later, mainly because I forgot to add it during the sketch, though I knew I wanted it on the design. And while I could have put it on the head, in my mind that didn't look really interesting or good. So I saw it would look better on the back. And having it at the end of the tail can make it be like a club for it. And I decided to add clocks in the forearms and legs for something a little interesting and different to the design. I mainly kept the Clockworks gold and black color scheme. And kept the face blue like Accelerate's. Though I did try to use the blue on the stripes of the tail. It wasn't entirely liking it. Though I do think in retrospect, I could have done like the blue on like the bottom half of the gold stripes of the tail, and that would have looked really cool. I also made the chest porthole in the clock area that same blue, and then added the gear-like designs in those areas in the face, similar to the ones you can find in the original Clockworks porthole thing. The tannish gold color doesn't come from either. It is more of a unique extra color to add to break up some areas that fits really well with the other colors already used. Anyways, thank you Nicoli Moon 6165 again for the suggestion, and let's take our final look at Stopwatch. <laughs> Lastly, for some reason, I really wanted to do a fusion of Pesky Dusk and Nanomech. Pesky Dusk is kind of an odd random alien from Omniverse that for no real reason I really like. And for Nanomech, I have fond memories of playing Fusion Fall and going around the game with the Nanomech helmet on and loving his head shape in Alien Force slash Ultimate Alien. So that's why I chose them. Though, looking back, I would call this very much a Frankenfusion, to quote O.R. Ash, that mainly has elements from Nanomech and less from Pesky Dust. 
Like I said, I like Nanomech's head, so tried to emulate that shape and then put Pesky Dust's hair behind it. Along with putting on the little cheek and chin marks, and extra points near the eye to be like the lashes the fairy has. Plus did the cute smile they also have too. Their body is pretty much a fusion of the two. Taking bits from Omniverse Nanomech there in the top half to fuse with the dress. While I then made the arms thin like pesky dusts with the gloves kind of a fusion of the two but more so like Nanomechs. The legs were pretty hard to draw especially the feet trying to get the pose I wanted to work, and keep the cool feet Omniverse gave Nanomech, but I think I figured it out in the end. As for the wings, they're... I wouldn't say a fusion, nor would I say they're supposed to be one or the other's wing, but I do like the little movement I did with them, which I did see from a Nanomech frame to help make it look like it's moving in the air. You'll probably notice that while doing the line work, I decided to give them an extra set of arms. I'm not sure why I decided on this, but I decided to see how it would look and love how it looks with the extra arms. Even if it doesn't make much sense for the fusion. For the colors, I went for a nice blue gray light color, sort of mixing Nanomech's metal gray body and Pesky Dust's light blue body color for this, and then turning the dress a darker teal light color to fit in with the blue. I kept the traditional Ben 10 green that's used for the eyes and glowing parts for the, well, eye and glowing bits of this fusion. But I did at one point turn these parts purple to see how that would look. And I think that purple color also works really well with this design, but kept the green color for contrast and consistency. I kept the wings purple, but also added some green sparkles in it too. I also did a more scenic background that I really like. Having them fly above the trees on some alien world with other worlds in the sky and it looks really cool. Though still need to work a bit more on dynamic scene like backgrounds. But that's our last fusion for the video, so let's look at our nanomech and pesky dust fusion, pesky mech. <laughs> And there we have it, another round of Ben 10 Alien Fusions done. With some viewer suggestions thrown in, and I'm quite pleased with how all four came out. Let me know in the comments what you think, and any suggestions I should do in another Ben 10 Fusion video. It will probably be a while before I do another one of these, but do have a few other Ben 10 related ideas I want to do before that. So if you haven't already, check out my first round of Ben 10 Alien Fusions. Or watch it again if you have already. And my other videos where I turn things into stands and FNAF animatronics into villagers. If you liked what you saw, leave a like and subscribe for more videos like this in the future. Along with helping us reach our subscriber goals. And check out my other socials for updates and other projects and art I do. If you'd like to support this series and my other projects, head over to my Patreon and become a patron today to get access to polls, early access to content, and other rewards along with helping us reach our Patreon video goals. Anyways, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Later!